Tyler. Yeah. So I did something I never did today. And you ain't said nothing about it. So, uh, shaved and left a little bit of, left a little bit of tash by itself. <laughs> I've been waiting on you to say something all night. Let me ask you a question. Let's say the first thing that comes to mind. Tom Selleck or Robert Duvall? Tom Selleck. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Tom Selleck. I'm a Gus man. I'm a Gus yeah. fan. I'll put on some dub, but, uh, yeah. Tom I'll Tom take Tom away. Selleck too. He's a pretty yeah. cool guy. All right. It's all one there. It's all <laughs> one. <laughs>
something a whole lot of people don't don't know about, and you know neither did I until <clears throat> the first four my uh, first four knives I made up to this point. And if you're watching this video and you don't know about the first four, go to at Mountain Prevail on Instagram or Mountain Prevail on Facebook and you can see tons of pictures. This is one of the four first ones that I finished. And the, you see that? ADCRV2 Mountain Prevail by me. And uh, this is, uh, handle's got a little bit of dark dye in it. But it's actually a piece of Australian uh, yellow box burl. And the grain is sick in it. But you kind of got to look at it up close. Plus, I've been using this. this is, I kept this one for myself to use and test and whatnot. And it's pretty dirty right now. Anyway. Anyway, moving along. Send the rest of them in my email, Tyler. Probably need to. <laughs> if they don't work, maybe we'll hit up uh, one of them girly uh, nail, nail salons. salons. <laughs> See if we get some acetone or something. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work too. Same thing. Same thing. All right. So they are probably clean enough at this point. It takes a lot of shop towels to do this job. So I'm going to get me a couple loose here ready to rock and roll for in a minute. And I'll work off of one. Alrighty. So, this is blade number one, numero uno. I put my logo, as you just seen. I usually try to keep the edge of my logo right about in line. Uh, with the plunge lines on the uh, bevel there. The hardest part of this whole thing is laying these stencils out because you, they're, they're kind of, even though they're transparent, they're kind of, when you lay them down, they're hard to sort of see where you're at. You can't really, it's hard to keep everything lined up. So you're just pretty well guessing at it. But anyway, all right, moving on. All right, so uh, we are electrochemically etching my logo and also going to etch the steel kind, steel type on the blade. Put my logo on one side. Put my logo on one side and then on the other side. Put ADCRV2 just right above the handle. All right, so I'm going to try to give you some information here. Not a how to do this, but information on where to source all this stuff from that it takes to get the job done. Try to give you a video with information like that that I wish I could have found when I was getting into all this stuff. So I have my logo made. LogoNerds.com and they done good. It's the logo on my hat and it's slightly different than the new logo. The main difference being my new logo, Mountain, is spelled out above Prevail versus MTN on the old one. <clears throat> anyway, told you that to tell you this. Let me back up just a little bit more. This is the etching kit I got uh, from USA Knife Maker. 
Midwest Knife Supply, whatever, it's the same thing. Their, their website's different than what the YouTube channel is, or I don't understand it, different than what the website is or something. But anyways, just Google USA Knife Supply, and you'll come up with good stuff. I bought a lot of stuff from them. Super nice, helpful people. Anyway, they sell this machine right here. This is a Knife Dogs etching unit right all right what it comes with is you get this you get a pack of these pads and these pads go on the end of the marker here so you know you get a handful of them and you can reuse those pads they send you some electrolyte sc44 that's kind of the, some of the more excuse me, common um, solution that you use to etch with. And they send you a bottle of Neutralite, which neutralizes the acid, right? Okay, so you got the kit, you can etch. But you got to have a logo. You got to have this UV printed paper here, right? With your logo or whatever you're wanting to mark. And uh, USA Knife Supply, or USA Knife Makers, I should have looked that up because why I always mix their name up, I do not know. Anyway, they can hook you up. It's on their website. They'll tell you where to get in touch with uh, IGM Marketing Group. They'll tell you on their website, contact these people. To have stencils made of your logo, right? All right, so I called, called this number on the website, got in touch with IGM, and got a hold of the nicest lady. And I have her name has completely slipped my mind, also. But anyway, what she does, she this is their machine. They actually make this machine for USA Knife Supply or Midwest Knife Maker, whatever you want to call them. So she was super helpful, and she also does artwork. And she does artwork making these UV stencils for tons of knife makers. And she gave me a lot of uh, useful information and stuff that uh, she, she was able to tell me things that a lot of other knife makers do that I needed to know because I'd never done it before as far as like sizing, how big this is and different fonts to use and whatnot. And uh, she also makes logos for people. So if I would have knew all this information in the beginning, I could have just called this one lady at IGM Marking Group. They got their website on here. IMGElectromark.com Can you see that? Right there. IGM Electromark.com. All right. Pause the video. Right there's a the number. Can you see that, Tyler? You clear? Yep. Give them a call. If you do that, you can talk to this one lady. She can get you a etching unit. She can hook you up with the kind of solutions you need, which is another point. I, this is what the kit came with. She and, and she told me, she said, what kind of steel are you using? Is it stainless or high carbon? I said, I'm using high carbon. She said, well, you're also going to need this stuff here, Electrolyte 94, to, to put the mark in high carbon steel. So that's something I would have never known if she wouldn't have told me. I would have just been here fighting it still yet. So anyways, if you get a hold of IGM, I mean, I don't know if you can buy one labeled knife dogs or whatever from them. But anyway, you can, this is their unit still yet. But you can get the unit from them. You can get your stencils made. You can get a logo made. One-stop shop would have been a much easier process had I known uh, beforehand. All right. Y'all understand that? Y'all get one of them? Lower. Y'all get what I'm saying to you? <laughs> oh, 
I hope when I try to explain stuff that I don't sound like I'm going around my elbow to get to my butt or nothing. You know, I'm, I'm not the best at explaining things in general. I want to give you some useful information. I want, uh, you know, to help, help some people out that's kind of struggled with. Because when you make knives and you're trying to do, this is a lot of processes that go through. And it kind of takes a lot of equipment. And it's hard to. Like you got to watch hundreds of daggone YouTube videos to figure all this stuff out. So, if I can, uh, if I can help you get there a little easier. I got you, man. That's what I'm here for. Tell them, Tyler. I'm so mad I can't. All right. Did I leave anything out? IGM. They'll make you all this stuff. This is a UV. A UV stencil. As you can see, it's transparent blue. And my logo in it, can you see that clearly? Kind of? Yep. Oh, focus. Did, it, did it focus? Put my hand up the side yeah, right here. There you go. That do it? Yep. My logo uh, inside the UV uh, film, it's actually like a mesh type material. And when all the magic happens, you use these wool type pads, it rubs on the mesh in this. And it's what makes contact with the blade. And anyway, we're about to do it all. You're about to see. I just, uh, before I had all this stuff here in front of me, I had no idea what was actually happening because nobody said this kind of thing in their videos. So, that's the reason I'm trying to give you a little bit of insight now. I hope all this makes sense to you. Okay. Here we go. All right. I told you I got Neutralite. I got Electrolyte 94 and an Electrolyte SC44. Two different kinds of Electrolyte. Now, when you Electro etch your logo in the blade, you start out putting a DC current. And, you, and I use on high carbon steel the SC44 first using a DC current to mark that eats that takes away metal that gives you a good deep etch that you can actually feel with your fingernail like hear this I hope y'all can hear that in the video that that is a deep my logo is a it's cut down into the to the metal now I chose on this first round to leave it like that just a deep edge now what I'm going to try to do on these tonight is after I etch and cut my logo down into the steel we're going to flip it to AC we're going to switch pads put a different kind of pad and a different kind of solution we're going to go to the 94 the electrolyte 94 and we're going to turn the logo black so that it it puts material back into the logo. It's still a deep etch, but it it turns the bottom of it black. I hope that makes sense to you. It'll make sense once I start doing it. Anyway, here we go. Here we go, kids. All right, we'll plug this up in. You know, everything's red and black. You plug the black to black. You plug the red to the red. Don't plug the red into the black because that'd just be stupid. Your red lead, this little alligator clip, all that's going to do is clip onto the blade. And then when I touch this one to it, that completes the circuit, right? That there is just a pad to protect the end of this carbon marker. Lay it up there out of the way. All right. I'm going to take this off for just a second. All right, I told you the hardest part of this is lining the logo up on the knife blade, right? And what I like to do is I like to keep the logo parallel 
with the grind lines, not parallel with the top of the knife, but slope the top of the spine. It's got a slope to it. I like to try to keep the logo, the bottom of the logo, parallel to do the uh, top of the bevel. And I like to keep this right hand side, L is the furthest thing to the right. I like to keep the end of that L kind of right in line, pretty close anyway, to where the plunge line starts. You following this, Tyler? You picking up? You picking up what I'm laying down? Etching, etching what I want. Smelling what I'm stepping in? Yeah, definitely. Hey, I need electric tape. Is there electric tape right there? Mm. Isn't that? Yeah. Sorry, y'all. I meant to have that ready. I used to do. I got a little, a little ahead of myself. Got all tore up here trying to explain this to y'all. Alright, so we're just going to... I know, it'd be a killer idea, wouldn't it? I'm going to use one of these Mount Prevail knives I've got here in my right hand. If you get in a sticky situation, it will suffice. I can assure you that. Mount Prevail. Bo Jesse. You know something, Tyler, we've not told people in videos yet in this whole series? How much do you know? <laughs> you don't know? What if somebody watching this video wanted a knife? What do they do, Tyler? Send me a message on Facebook, man. Instagram, whatever. Comment the video. Comment the video. Comment the video. That's what my pal old Bill did. Of course, me and Bill goes way back. He sent me a comment to the video first, and that's cool. All right, so I'm going to get several pieces of this stuff. <clears throat> you go through a lot of electric tape, because I'm going to redo this each time. It's my chair making noise. I thought somebody was walking up on the porch here. I was wondering who's here. All right. All right, so here's something else. When you when you buy these these stencils, they say if you take care of these, they will do up to like 200 marks a piece before you actually wear them out. And they're kind of expensive. So when you buy them, you get this little sheet right here. And it's got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of them on it. And four of them with the ADCRV2 on it, right? So I could get several of these things laid out here. But I'm not. I'm just going to use the one. And I'm going to clean it in between each edge with the uh, uh, Neutralite. And then use it right back on the next blade. You can only do one at a time anyway, so I don't think it's going to save no great amount of time by putting wear and tear on all the stencils. So I'm just going to use the one until she's wore slap out. Now, here's some more information. If you ain't listening to nothing I'm saying so far, you need to listen to this. Give us a thumbs up on this video. Please like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you'll know when we upload another video to the channel. Honey. That ain't what I was going to tell you. That's just what I just added right off the top of my head. That ain't what I was going to tell you. Actually, what I was going to tell you is I'm about to take these pads off top of these bottles and put them on this. You get them fairly well saturated when you uh, when we start marking. That's the reason for the tape. You don't want to uh, you want to seal this off so no solution can run across this 
and get to the blade anywhere else because it'll put a black etch mark on the blade somewhere where you do not want it. Now I got this fluorescent light here above me and it's about the right angle right now to where I can sort of see what's going on. I can see my plunge line a little bit under my logo. So I'm going to hold her down there where it's prevail. It's sitting right on top of the uh, bevels, on the, on the straight line part of the bevels. And I'm going to slide it right straight up. Just trying to eyeball it close. Not close. Exactly. Exactly. Not close. Perfect. What I'm trying to say. 100% perfect. Spot on. Now I'm just kidding. It's pretty close. Uh, like I say, I'm going to keep my L right above the plunge line. And I'm going to keep the whole logo the bottom of Prevail parallel with the ground lines. Am I con have I confused y'all yet? I hope not. I don't mean to. I'll let you know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> well, they probably won't. Because I get <laughs> Yeah. All right. So I'm 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 close right there as I'm going to get this thing to where I want it. Right. Uh oh. Pull that off for me. Thank you. All right. So I'm gonna put a piece of electrical tape right there, holding that thing to the blade. Right. This top part is hanging off, so it's it's uh, it's going to be fine. We're not going to worry about it. We're going to put a piece across the bottom. And this will be a much faster process on the next ones. I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to halfway explain this to where I, to where you can figure out how to do it by watching this video. They're probably sitting at home on their couch right now watching me, Tyler. Thinking this guy has never etched a logo before, ever in his <laughs> life. <laughs> I have four times. Thank you very much. <laughs> so I did. I have done it once. I've done it four times. I'm a pro at it now. Expert etcher. Gotta put that on my resume. Expert. Would you call it a etchy? Mm -hmm. Etchy or an etcher? <laughs> Who knows? Okay. Alright, so like I was telling you, we gotta gotta use a couple different pads here. Or a couple different solutions and you know you don't want to mix the solutions on the pad, so we're going to use different pads all right so this is the first one this is the sc44 this is what you use to actually burn the logo down into the blade that pad that wool pad it just goes on there with a the rubber band that holds it on la 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 hallelujah amen dump a little on there gonna get her pretty wet <laughs> Get you off my alligator, golly. I'm talking about the wool pad. You want it, you want it wet, but you don't want it. You don't want it dripping, all right? <laughs> Seriously. <you'd... laughs> Add the extra off a little bit there. It can be too wet. All right. All right, we got our... What? <laughs> Tyler's about to have a meltdown over here. Let it out. It's all right. Let it, just let it go, buddy. We're just having fun here. All right. <laughs> all right. Like I was saying, you, you got DC and you got AC on this electro etch box here. We'll turn it on and we'll flip it. The DC, 
the intensity goes from 1 to 10. We're going to shoot it right about the middle there, a little above the middle. We're going to shoot her about five and a half. And we're going to give it, uh, oh, more. Oh, Lord, here, I about forgot to put my daggone uh, alligator clip back on. We're going to give it about 30 or so licks on the DC side to get a good deep etch burn down into it. So you can hear it. I can hear it. I hope y'all can hear it. Y'all hear that? It went. Um, um, um. Can y'all hear that? I hope. I really hope y'all can hear that. Is that exactly you hear it, Tyler? Is that exactly what it sounds like? Ninety-nine <laughs> percent. All right. What was that for? We're going, like I said, we're going to give it about thirty, couple three seconds each. Some people does fifteen, and they'll hold it on there for eight or nine seconds. But a guy that I really like and that he does great work this is how he does it. So it's how I'm going to do it. Five, six, and you can rub it around on there. Seven, because you want the wool fibers to penetrate through that uh, mesh screen. Now, if you're touching the blade out here while you do this, while 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 the pad's on it, you can actually feel a little bit of current. Going through there, it don't hurt you or nothing, but you can tell there's a little action going on there for sure. How many is that? You counting? Was that 16 ish? Three or four. It don't, it don't gotta be exactly. Right. It does gotta be exactly 100% perfect. We're gonna call that 21. Two. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. All right, turn it off. Now, all we're going to do, that, that, gets, that gets fairly warm. Don't mix your pads up with the solution you're using. So make sure you set them to the side. All right, then I'm gonna switch to the Electrolyte 94. Like I was telling you a few minutes ago, that's what the lady that makes this daggone machine says works best on uh, high carbon steel. So who am I to argue with her, right? This is where you say, that's right, Gizzy. That's right, buddy. They can leave that in the comments. Leave that in the comments. If you think I can argue with her, let me know. All right. Same deal here. Gonna get her good and wet. Saturate that thing. Rub it a little bit. Spread it out. And uh, make sure it ain't dripping. If it drips off of it, we're gonna turn this thing back to or uh, no. we're going to turn it back on we'll flip it to AC because AC is what sh turns this thing black turns so you can really see that and you want to do about half as many half or three quarters I did 31 of the other so it's five probably going to do 20 of these Hear that? It's still going to every time. 
I mean, that naked, I lost count. Oh, Lord God. One. What's everyone rubbing around? Y'all hear that? <laughs> We're probably good. If you do too much of this, it'll actually put like a little halo mark around the logo. And a lot of videos talk like that's just the worst daggone thing that could ever happen. But when we get this done, you're going to see it's going to look kind of ugly. That's good. We're going to call that deadly, right? Turn her off. Um, pull this off. It's going to look pretty ugly. But it takes two seconds and a little bit of hand sanding over top of it. it should clean it up beautiful. Y'all ready for this? All right, so that's pretty ugly, right? That done good. That done really good. Now, first thing you want to do, you want to get some Neutralite. Because this is a, a, like an acidic thing you're doing here to it. You want to really rub that in good. You just, uh, rub it in good and make sure you get it down into the logo. It's a good deep edge that done really well. You want to make sure you neutralize everything because you don't want to look at this thing here in 45 minutes or whatever when I get done with all these other ones and then realize the bottom of the logo has got a little rust in it. That's a bad day. So you can see, you can see how that turned out. Is that a good close shot? What do you need? Talk to me, honey. What do you need? Closer? That's awesome. All right, you see it looks a little dirty yet around it. Looks a little dirty around it. Um, when I get these others done, we'll show you how quick that cleans up. Now it goes from looking to mushy to deadly. Okay, now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this electric tape off because, I don't know, you might could reuse this. I don't trust it. Electric tape's cheap. So it ain't nothing to cut a handful of strips of that mess and redo that every time. I'm going to take some Neutralite. Same thing I put on the logo a minute ago. I'm just going to put a little bit on each side of the UV stuff here. And uh, get that screen all cleaned back out. I've always cleaned these in between knives. I've always cleaned it after each time of use, and I haven't had no buildup hardly whatsoever. But they say if you try to use uh, use these for three or four knives at a time, not clean them, that you'll get black crud and stuff stop up the mesh, and it just will not burn a good clean logo. That uh, I don't take chances when it comes to this point. Because like I say, you don't want to put so much hours and time into a blade at this point. All the grinding and cutting out and more grinding and heat treat and more grinding and sanding. Then you, then you don't want to ruin a blade with an etch and have to junk it. So there's no reason to take any risk at this point, right? Right, Jesse, you shouldn't. Good idea, buddy. Okay. I lost that pencil again, Tyler. Where's it at? Is it in my hat? It is not. Drop it in the floor. Sitting on it. Lord God, honey. There it is. There it is. It's just hiding right there under my blue shop towel. Okay, so now that my logo is on the side that I want it on, we're going to put the ADCR V2, which is the steel type, on the opposite side. Now, see how I did this one? Put it right above, right above the handle. That's what we're going to shoot for. But there's no handle at this point. 
All right, so we're just going to give myself a little bit of a reference mark. I know pretty close where my handle. I mean, exactly where my handles is going to end up. Not, not close. Hundred percent, exactly. So I'm gonna put myself a little bit of a reference pencil mark, pretty close to where my handles is going to end up. Thank you, buddy. <clears throat> All right, and I'm gonna, like I say, you see that pencil mark? That's where I'm gonna aim for my handles to go. All right, so I'm gonna put this on there. Right about the middle of the blade. And uh, let me look at my other one here. Yeah, we'll go right about the middle of the blade. Somewhere around the sixteenth of an inch up from where my handles is going to end up. And if it's a little more, looks fine. Roll with it. Now I'm going to try to lay this thing where I can see what's going on on my pencil mark good. And I'm just going to eyeball it left to right and get it close. By close, I mean exactly in between left to right, 100%. 100%. say I'm gonna stay sixteenth of an inch or something up from the line and I'm gonna try to lay this eighty CRV too right parallel with the pencil line that I just marked on there a minute ago. And that is pretty daggone close right there. Thank you brother. Uh oh Brother, <laughs> I can't not do this one handed, definitely can't do it with one left hand. I can't really scratch my butt left handed. Can you? Mm. You can't either. pretty good like I say same thing with this one the right hand side of the stencil is laying off the blade by a quarter or three-eighths of an inch or more really not worried about solution running around that much so we're going we're going to roll with it and uh, what I meant to tell you a few minutes ago, and I didn't, is right here where your tape overlaps in these corners. Mash that down real good. Because if that liquid can find a way out, by God, she will every time. So you really don't want that happening. Okay. Back to the same thing as a few minutes ago. Same process on this as the other side. We're going to go... Put this pad back with this solution so we don't mix it up. We'll get the SC44 pad back out. We're going to rubber band that baby doll right back on the end again. Pull her down there good and tight. It's pretty wet still yet. Might be all right. Just for good measure. I'm going to moisten that baby doll on up a little bit. We're going to call that good. I'm going to turn it to etch. And I'll tell you from experience, pay attention to what you're doing here. It's best is like when you get done doing this, when you lay it down, 
go ahead and switch it to what you're going to be doing next so you don't forget and uh, have it on AC when you mean to have it on DC or whatever. DC's first to etch with. Just got her going. Same thing. I'm going to hit her about 30, 30 licks here. Uh oh. See see what you went and let me do? Forgot to put my alligator clip on there, Tyler. No buzzing. No buzzing. I was wondering why it didn't go. <laughs> there it is. You put the microphone down here. You hear that? In case y'all can't hear that, it goes. <laughs> Tyler, whenever you edit this video, can you uh, spell that out on the screen for everybody? <laughs> I don't know how you spell it. You'll figure it out. I'll Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I ain't even thought about counting it. We're going to call that 11. <laughs> you know why 11? Why 11? <laughs> I was hoping you'd tell me. I ain't got no idea. All right, gonna call that thirty. Gonna turn it off. Gonna go ahead and turn the machine to AC. In case and I forget in a minute, it'll already be there, and I won't have to worry about it. I'm wipe into my tool off a little bit here. Put the elect uh, electrolyte ninety one ninety four. I said. And if your pad gets dirty, you can clean in with the electrolyte, just like you do the stencil. Or if it gets real nasty, you can put a new one on it. But I've used these, well, four times, and they, they're pretty clean yet, so we're not going to... seems to me like these things are going to last pretty daggone good while. I'll give that a good shot. Keep any kind of drip from coming off. Turn the machine back on.
I'm putting this stuff up. For whatever reason, these UV stencils, you want to store them? Have them sun. No sun can get to them. No light. In the dark. Keep them dark, honey. Keep them dark. Clean this darn mess up. All right, y'all. Excuse me. These five are etched. Logo on one side and the ADC RV2 on the other. As you can see, it's a pretty, pretty dirty, mushy looking logo. At this point, we got some 800 grit sandpaper, and this is just uh, regular old wet sand stuff I get from the local auto parts store. Like so, as you can see, I got Jen's blade all clamped on getting the table here. We'll give her a little shot of slick them here. I got a piece of. My car to super flat, that's the reason I'm using it. 800 grit. And we're just going to give her a little quick sand in here. And then if this don't clean up like we want it to, might possibly have to back up to 400 grit. But it looks to be doing a deadly job. So this is probably going to be all I do. Oh yeah. Okay, we'll flip it over. Just go ahead and hit the ADCRV2 part. A little bit here. Awesome. No kidding. <clears throat> all righty. So that takes all of a couple minutes each. Tyler, tell me where I need to be. Good and yeah, clear. Looks, good. looks pretty good, don't it? Good crisp etch, deep etch. Got her all blackened on the bottom. Got the ADC RV2 on the back side. And just to show you uh, the differences from that little two minutes of hand sanding. Can you see those all right? Yeah, hit us a little WD-40 and 800 grit. Good boy. This takes two minutes and cleans it right up. There's a before and after the backside. Day and night difference. Yeah, looks good on it. Mm -hmm. Good crisp itch. I love it. It's going to look good. Alrighty. Alrighty. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching. I know this video got a little lengthy, but I wanted to spend a little time in that first little bit and kind of just so you can just watch the whole process of actually what goes on. There's there's definitely not a ton of electro etching content on YouTube for you to watch, and I'm no pro by no means, but I'm learning some, and uh, hopefully I can share something with you guys if you had never done this before and come across this video that may help you along your way of figuring this mess out too anyway give us the like give us the like give us a thumbs up to like the video that's what i try to say please subscribe thanks for hanging there and watching this long video and i'll see next uh next video we'll uh we'll get into uh
working on some handle material and hopefully here in the next couple of videos we'll, we'll have a, a finished knife or a five to show you so anyway y'all have a great rest of the week I'll see you soon